The sermon for the 14th week after Pentecost is from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 7, verses 14 to 23. Uh, the sermon is entitled, The Heart of Man. Grace to us and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. From last week, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You leave the command of God and hold to the tradition of men. Continuing on with our gospel in Mark chapter 7, this theme of tradition of men always reminds us, well, that in our own human hands, what we have done by our own merits, this was for the Pharisees and the scribes and for all the people their own semblance of assurance to God. For the Pharisees, of course, this played a significant role as set-apart holy ones, that if they followed the law perfectly, in the midst of this gauntlet of life, well, there they would have their assurance. I think I know I've brought this up before, but when I think of the gauntlet, I think of Harrison Ford in Raiders of the Lost Ark, that opening scene, going to get uh, the treasure, and there he is uh, jumping and jiving, twisting and turning, strafing and climbing, all for the sake of this treasure. And that is a perfect picture of the life for the Pharisee. It was a never-ending endeavor of proving your worth through the gauntlet of external works to keep up. And you must do this with your human heart and hands. And yes, it seemed like the Pharisees were honoring God, yet their hearts were far from only Christ. Knowing their hearts, Jesus continues to teach the people that in the midst of all the laws that they were following, especially in this case, the food and dietary laws of, of what to eat, of what not to eat, of what was clean and what was unclean, their version of holiness, of purity, was keeping up with food, whether it defiled them or also which also made them clean. Now, Jesus proceeds, as school started uh, for many this week, he proceeds with a class on Anatomy 101, where there he says, food, when you eat it, well, where does it go? It goes straight to the stomach. It has nothing to do with the heart, and thus has nothing to do with defilement. For Jesus declares that all food is clean. See, this is the great misunderstanding for the people. It was their own hearts. And with this misunderstanding, they believed, just like Indiana Jones, they had to earn and gain their own cleanliness, their own holiness by their own free will, by their own work, as if they could bring the works to the table to achieve salvation for themselves. And so it is today. And as these days draw near as we live it in this life of faith, Many view Christianity, and this is becoming more and more prevalent as the years go on, many view Christianity solely on this basis of this law-abiding morality. It's slowly becoming marginalized to the point where all your work, all your merits in this pharisaical way is your faith. Simply. Jesus is that little addition to your works. And his death and resurrection, well, it's good, but you need to do better. And because of it, we have this, as I coin it, I don't know if I coin it or if someone else coined it, but this good heart theology. How this good heart theology has become a mainstay in our spiritual landscape of the world. And you hear it, how this good heart theology comes out. From the secular wor world, we hear the words, I am a good person, and if there is a God, if there is a God, I'm pretty sure 
he would be pleased with all that I've done in my life. And even closer, in this umbrella of Christianity, yes, I grew up in the church. I no longer attend. But you know, I have a good and pure heart. And I'm sure that means something to God. And even closer to home for you and me, when it comes to the question, what does it mean to be Christian, how, how quick we bring up that spreadsheet, that Excel spreadsheet in our mind, telling us, well, how many times have I been to church? How many good works have I done? How many commandments have I followed? How much proof and evidence have I brought to the table? Again, all these give me a good heart. Is that true? What do these words indicate? The good heart of theology is all about me, myself, and I. We learn today in our scripture that it's about sustaining ourselves, isn't it? That we keep our seats warm in heaven by our own merits. That we convince ourselves that because of this good and pure heart that I have, somehow from that good heart I have a peaceable conscience. That with this good heart, this pure heart, I can actually climb and ascend to God and elevate to Him as if I can prove my own self in front of Him. And there with this good heart, I say, God, look how much I've done. Look how good I am. Look how pure I am in front of you. Is this possible? See, friends, when we fail to see what is truly before us, when we fail to understand our true condition, if we fail, we will inevitably dwell, delve into the heart, trying to find any concrete semblance of assurance in our standing with God. We look inward and we tell ourselves, I think I do have a pure heart. I'm a good person, right? Now today, Jesus, in our gospel reading, crushes any validity to what this good heart theology brings to the table. Because what does Jesus show us, humbly speaking, that comes from within? He says, for from the heart of man comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wit wickedness, deceit, sensuality, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. In the garden, Adam and Eve, as they saw, took and ate, the curse of sin entered the world. And because of this sin, thus flows from Holy Scripture, no one is righteous, not even one. Even our most righteous works are like filthy rags. In sin did my mother conceive me. Friends, it's so important to understand original sin. Because when we fail to see what this doctrine of original sin has brought to the table, we proceed as if we have clean slates, as if we have this good heart, as if we can achieve this pursuit for righteousness. And we tell ourselves this is possible when in fact because of original sin this is impossible none of us not even one can achieve such things this world doesn't want to hear that do they our old adam doesn't want to hear about what the reality of our sin has brought to the table you and i both were not born good with a pure heart. And that's tough to swallow, isn't it? But rather, we are all born into sin. For the wages of sin is death. And dead we are, needing to be spiritually made alive, 
And thus we have the inability to save ourselves. That this good heart theology we cannot cling to. And though the devil says you can be like God and you can achieve all things, at the end of the day, the devil is a fraud. Every single time the devil points you away from Christ, whether it is to your works or even to your guilt, as the devil accuses each and every one of us, every which way, the evil foe, his strategy is to turn you from only Christ. The helmet of your salvation, the sword of truth, the devil turns you away from the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel, only Christ. That the devil turns you away from the cross and empty tomb and the word and the sacraments, the full armor of God. You can do this yourself, the devil says. You don't need God's armor. This is the battle that we face, isn't it? Not flesh and blood. Not what is on the surface, but rather the spiritual battle, the cosmic forces of evil. Where there the devil is throwing every temptation at you, turning you from only Christ. You know, our text shows us and gets rid of, if you have a smug heart today, if you have a self-righteous heart today, if you have a works righteousness heart today, if you have this good heart theology today, Jesus crushes all of that. On the other hand, if you are despaired, if you have this despaired heart, and you tell yourself, not even the blood of Christ can forgive me of my sin, There the Lord is with you. See, at the end of the day, the word brings us to nothing. And surely from the law comes the knowledge of our sin. And Jesus lays it out perfectly. He is that great physician. I was telling Marjorie this morning as uh, she was coming into church. I'm like, yeah, I, got, I should definitely find a doctor. It's been too long. <laughs> it's only been four years here. Still need to find a more park doctor. The point is, is that the great physician, Jesus Christ, gives us a true diagnosis. He shows us our true sickness. He shows us our true sin. That from within, there we have it, ever since we were born into this world separated from God. And at that very moment, just like any good doctor would, our Lord, the great physician, doesn't say, do this and do this and do this and earn your way and give yourself a pure heart. No, rather, in your diagnosis of sin, he outpours to you the most merciful and gracious remedy. Our Lord gives you and hands you his son. From within, you and I both know our sin. Dirty, disgusting, wicked, muddied our hearts are. No cleaning solvent could wash that away. But there our great physician is, our Lord Christ who forgives you, who is your remedy, who is your salve and solvent. He forgives you of all your sins. This is what you need to hear. Not some other cleansing agent that will not clean at all, but our Lord who cleanses your heart by shedding his blood for you, washing away all of your sins. By being your remedy, laying his life down as the great physician, giving you the full armor of God, protecting you from sin, death, and the power of the devil as your almighty and gracious refuge. 
that by his good work, from the snake to the cross to the crown, our Lord achieved for you your righteousness. His sacrifice. Forgiven you are. The pursuit of salvation. Your name is written in his book. The book of life. And there you cling in this life of faith. No longer do you rest on this good heart, law-driven morality theology. But rather you cling and rest in only Christ's. Trust me. We very well know this is the answer, yet the devil, he never stops. And time and time again, the evil, evil flow will scratch and claw and even roar that God's grace is not sufficient, that you must do more. The devil, a skilled archer he is, flinging every arrow your way. This is the battle that is before each and every one of us. Do you see it? And though daunting it may seem, at the same time our faith sees Jesus, the one who has crushed and defeated the evil foe. His work, the evil foe, has been destroyed. As the armor of God, only Christ has overcome all things, has conquered and has given you victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil. And there, Jesus, by his death and resurrection in the word and sacraments, there he has given you a good heart, and you have a good heart. You have a good heart. But, Pastor, my heart is wrapped in sin from within, just as Jesus says, I know that all too well. But today, Jesus says, by his very promise, I have given you and declare your heart good. For what is good is his forgiveness outpoured to you. What is good is the big death that he died for you as the gates of hell have been crushed and loosed. What is good is that your identity is a child of God reconciled to his name. And for what is good, our Lord mercifully and graciously redeems each and every one of you. So go now with only Christ, where there you cling in faith, with a good heart, covered by the blood of the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. May the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able.